Yeah, Peter, nice to meet you, buddy. <laughs> Sorry about that. I really was battling with the app technology. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your patience. Uh, you know, no problem. Pretty busy Monday, and uh, I'm I'm grateful that you're taking time out of your day to be with us. And I've been to your website. It looks like you do a lot of great work to help people out that are trying to navigate the markets. Uh, I'd be interested in how you got started in the investing trading industry. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the beginning of your journey. Yeah, I mean. Um... I started off pretty much around the worst time possible in the dot-com boom, um, which obviously is the you know I'm putting money in right at the top of the market, which was obviously the most stupidest thing to do. But of course, at the time, I knew no better. Um, I, so I, you know, so I've been sort of trade, investing, trading for I don't know 18 years or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I've seen some ups and downs. I mean, obviously the the bear market going into 2003 after the dot com boom was pretty nasty. Yeah. Um, and had a nice recovery for many years up until the credit crunch in 2007. And the credit crunch was just a really horrible time, you know, uh, as a as a mainly long stock investor and very much a long term investor, it was a pretty nasty experience. Um, but you know, I did a bit of shorting and stuff, and and sort of came out of it okay. But uh, you know, th these kind of times teach you a lot, I think. And uh, you know, obviously, at some point, we're going to see another one um, of what magnitude no one can know. Um, but you know, we need to be aware of that and thinking of it. And it's very interesting seeing what you guys were saying about the uh, charts, particularly on the American ones, the S and P five hundred and stuff. Which, yes. which you know, they they do look pretty hot, don't they? Um, but obviously, you know, these things can still grind higher. Yeah, you never uh, know how how far a rubber band can stretch before it snaps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, you know, you uh, I I've been to your website and you have a blog and you list your trades. Uh, what's the mission of your website and what you're doing? Do you have a business model? Or is all of this humanitarian work for people to? It's it's, it's a very much humanitarian thing. Um, oh, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, ba basically, what happened was, I effectively retired eight years ago, and one of my reasons for so I was forty four when I retired. One of my reasons for retiring was that I'd sort of, you know, taken my investing as far as I could. And I felt that I needed more time to be able to focus on it and to really fine tune things and hone things and to improve, you know. And okay. but basically that's that's the sort of route I took eight years ago. And, and for the first couple of years that worked really well and, and I sort of read a load of books and I felt like I was making progress and I was learning things and I was moving things forward. But then I got to the point three years ago where I started to feel I was getting stale. And I started to feel that I needed some other challenge, you know, something else, some, some other buzz. And, and long story short, we hit on the idea of me starting a website and to use Twitter quite a lot as a sort of a way that people could get in touch with me in a way that I could give information on a much more sort of real time basis. Um, then you know, then you're able to do a website. So and, then your uh, major, your major motivation for launching this website, and you know, I've talked to people about it, Pete, that you get more clarity when you're sharing your work. And really, what is what good is anything until you share it with another? And when you talk about it, actually, it crystallizes it for you as well, and makes you accountable to yourself because you're sharing it with other people and you uh, make the effort to share your best efforts and best work. Uh, was, yeah, that the, that's was that true. the motivation for this? Yeah, I mean, it, it really helps to clarify your thinking. Um, but as I say, really, the, the, the biggest motivation of all 
was just simply because I felt like I was a bit lost and I felt like I'd taken my investing as far as I could and I needed something else to sort of get my teeth into, um, partly to keep myself sane, you know. Um, and and it's really turned out to surprise, it surprised me in so many ways because as you say, it really helps, you know, we're, we're thinking about how you do things. But the other big advantage is it's enabled me to meet people like yourself um, you know, it's, it's enabled me to meet so many great investors and traders that I would never have dreamt of having access to. Um, and in the meantime, it's had the added benefit, I'm sure, for lots of people that, that, that they're able to get access to me and, and through me, they found other people and whatever. Um, and it's yeah. been a hugely positive thing. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm so pleased. It's like that you, have your own, you have your own community through your website. Yeah. You yeah. develop a community. All right, yeah, but, uh, can you can you show us your website right now? I'm looking at you're sharing your screen your screen. Yeah, yeah. Right, so so a bit more exciting. Hang on, okay. I, I, I'm worried if I touch any buttons, it'll all crash. Don't worry about it. Here we go. Right. All right. Okay, is that my website? Yeah, it, it is. Brilliant. Right. So so yeah. So so I mean, the website is incredibly basic. Um, one of the things that I always stress to people is to look at this bit on the home page, the, the changes list, because what I do is I outline on there things I've altered on the website. Um, so, you know, last night I wrote a new blog, which included some charts on some particular stocks that I've, you know, those are UK based stocks. Okay. Um, and I also covered some, some of the index charts. Well, I, I put the S&P 500 in there. I also put the pound dollar in there. Um, so, you know, so I, I cover quite a few things in that. Um, but, yeah, so that changes list is really important. That, that's our wheelhouse. Uh, do you have a view on the pound dollar that you'd like to share with us? Well, um, what I can do, probably the easiest way to show that, is if I go to the actual blog, so, so this is the blog that I wrote last night, um, and I'll open it up. So if I scroll down the blog, I, I wrote loads of, you know, waffle at the start. I talked here about the webinar, funnily enough. Yeah, oh, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I actually put in here, a, a, there's a magazine that we use in the UK, which is, is a very sort of highly bought magazine. I think it has about 100,000 subscribers. And they always do their tips of the year. And one of the things I've just put in here for, for readers is I've just, just listed the tips of the year um, for 2018 that they thought. And obviously, with any tips, no one should just automatically buy them. But they're an interesting route to, to further ideas. Um, one that I've actually got myself, I mean, I'm obviously very pleased to see them tipping it after I'm, I'm in much lower down. Um, is Entertainment One, ETO, and there's a chart of it there and all, and I, I write loads of stuff about the chart and there's another chart on it and, and the interesting one there is the breakout situation. Right. Um, ETO was in a sort of sideways range for probably a year and a half and then where my um, blue arrow is, it, it broke out and personally I think it can go a lot higher. Um, Anyway, if we scroll down, somewhere here I have the pound and the dollar, um, if I can find them, amongst all my other charts that I ended up covering. Uh, right, there's the S&P 500. What are you uh, saying about the S&Ps? Yeah, really, I was sort of saying it looks a little bit toppy in the very short. I've actually got a long position on the S&P 500, and this screen that I'm showing here is actually my... My, my real live working screen that I use. Okay. Um, and I've raised my stop loss to where the green arrow is and the green line. Um, you know, I think that pretty much like you, you guys were saying before, I think it's probably due a bit of a pullback in the very short term. Well, I suspect the chances are it will test the um, previous resistance and it will probably go a little bit higher before we get you know, the, the, fi the, the final denouement. Um, but yeah, you can see on the daily RSI, you know, it's on RSI of 76. 
that's yeah. the highest it's been, you know, looking back several years. So it, it, it does look pretty hot. Um, so further down here somewhere, right, pound. So before I, before I do the pound dollar, just throw one in quickly. I haven't really noticed your guys mentioning it much. I use this thing called the Heikanashi candles quite a bit. Okay. And I absolutely love that. Um, funnily enough, I noticed that one of your um, contributors, Nicola Duke, I actually okay. got the idea from her. And oh, okay, yeah. yeah what I love about HA candles is that they smooth things out. So they're, they're like a sort of, um, they're more of an average over a couple of days, I believe. And they smooth out the noise. So, so basically, when you've got red bits, you're going down. When you've got white bits, you're going up. Um, and it's, it's very clear and easy to see. I, I do like that. All right. Uh, see how you can learn. You can learn. Yeah, uh, Nick is a very talented trader and tactician. And yeah, it's great that you learned and you acknowledged her for learning that from her. So, yeah, excellent. Yeah, we have quite a team here. You know, people yeah, call it the like dream. People call it the dream team. The dream team. I can see that. Um, so, yeah, so, so what I'm pointing out on the pound dollar is that if you go back several years, you've got the yeah. long, a sort of long term downtrend line, which is my black line, and then you've got a sort right. of shorter term downtrend, line, which is my red line. And we're right. sort of breaking out of that red line, but the black, it, if we can achieve that, the black line is, is going to cause problems, I think. Um, That'd be one heck of a move up to 150. Yeah, I like your green channel, though. Yeah. So, so that so, yeah, green so, channel, a nice channel we've been in for a year now. Yeah, that's right. So and, we, and, it, and it looks like they, and it looks like the red line and the green line intersect where, say, about 133 down there. That would be a pretty negative sign if we got you know your red downtrend line and your green uptrend line seem to intersect in the mid 130s yeah That's no what I'm talking about if it dropped below that that would be a bit of a worry i mean these things can yeah, overshoot line, but and there's there's sort of support from the 200 day moving average around 130 but okay, if it drops below that I would say the pounds well on the way down okay Okay, so for now, uh, for now, it's doing nothing wrong, and one forty yeah, exactly. spots. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Um, FTSE one hundred, I covered a bit on. There was an interesting breakout situation here yeah. from, from seven thousand six hundred, um, and it's yeah. it's run a bit since that. Looks like it should go to eighty one, based on that formation. It, yeah, doesn't it? Like you have about yeah. at least eight thousand. Yeah, to be honest with you, I'm not. I'm not huh? I I tend to keep things fairly simple on on my sort of chart stuff, and uh, okay. I'm not you I like know, that. setting targets and stuff in that way. But personally, I think it's quite believable it can do eight thousand, and chances are it could do eight one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's nice, one nice of the technical. I like I like when things aren't too complex. Uh, you know, I'm a believer in Forrest Gump trading. You know, keep it yeah. simple. And uh, you know, otherwise, if you have too much, too many things to look at, and you have to wait for everything to line up, Pete, um, there's never that perfect trade. There's no such thing. There's just higher and lower probability trades. Do you agree with that? Oh, I, th I think there's so much truth to that. I mean, I think the thing that I've learned over the years is that it, you know less is more, and and keeping your your charts and your indicators fairly simple and 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 fairly repetitive. I I use the same kind of indicators over and over and over again on pretty much right. everything, and you sort of you sort of learn how they work and, and you, you get the nuances of them, you know. Do, you, do your uh, people, again. Do your people that you interact with, Pete, ask you about leverage 
and uh, whether they should use it or what's the right oh. amount? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've um, in my in my blog page. Um, let's go back to that. Um, on my blog page, I mean, I've in addition to my um, chart blogs that I tend to do most weekends, usually on a Sunday night. Um, I also do a lot of sort of various different subjects, really, and, and you know, stuff that I write about. And one of the things I wrote a long series on was about spread betting. So somewhere here, yeah, so, so this list here is the categories of all the different, you know, kind of groupings of blogs. If you click on the spread betting one, you come up with loads of different um, subjects around spread betting. Um, Can you give us so, a, yeah. a basic definition of what spread betting is? Oh, by all means. So, somewhere in this, this blog list, there is a very deep description of spread betting and how to use spread betting. I think I wrote actually five or six blogs and I've had a lot of feedback from readers who say, you know, they absolutely love what I did on this particular blog set. Um, one way you can find the blogs is if you go to, let's do it here, um, beginners and useful links. Yeah, we're, we're getting some here. attendees that are complimenting you on your website. That they have it Excellent. up right now. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, if you go to this thing, uh, the, the beginners and useful links page, because I've got a whole chunk on for the beginners there. Um, there's a thing called the blog index list, which is probably the most ridiculous name ever, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, and if you scroll down to the blog index list, here is a list of every single blog I have written since day one. And I wow. think there's probably about 300 of the, of the devils. Um, yeah. So if you look down the list, you'll find there, you know, the, the guide to spread betting somewhere. Um, there's just so, oh, I think that might, yeah, there it is there. Yeah, yeah. How to use leverage safely and successfully with us. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I think, okay. I think that totally would address people's, um, you know, anything you want to know about spread betting, basically, and about using leverage, and I mentioned CFDs in there and, and, and whatever. Um, okay. So, you know, that's a, the easiest way to find these, you, there's a search box on the home page, or there's a search box just up above here somewhere, or there should be. Um, yeah, there, there's a, there's a search box there. Um, and basically, you can you can search for what you want to find. Or you can use the date and go on to the blog page and, and just use the date to find it. Um, you know, it, it sounds to me like you're a pretty disciplined technician, but do you have anything on your radar screen for 2018 that uh, you believe could develop in perhaps, you know, uh, gold or energy or bonds or any big picture things on your radar? for this year that we're entering just now that well, you may yeah, have to buy. I mean, I mean, the funny thing is, um, although a lot of people think that I am a, a sort of technical trader, I wouldn't really class myself as a technical trader. I would say I am first and foremost a long-term stock investor. And, uh, okay. you know, if you go to my, let's just show you my portfolios page, if you go to my um, portfolios, I've got full listing there of all of the stocks I hold. And I've got this first thing is what I call my income portfolio, which is just 12 stocks, very low risk, very inactive. And all I'm after there is the dividends. And I'm just, you know, it's one I just hold forever. The dividends tick in and I reinvest the dividends and it's all dead boring and, and whatever. Okay. Um, if you scroll down, I've got here, there's a list of the stocks I'm much more active with. So this is what I like to call the WD-40, yeah. um, which is various, and they're mainly UK stocks. I, I do hold PayPal at the moment, PYPL, which is a, is a US stock. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I would too. They take uh, four or six percent of everything that goes through them. It's a pretty nice. Yeah, exactly. Idea. Yeah, it's been an absolute belter. I actually got hold of the shares first of all as, as eBay, and then they were spun out of eBay. And I think that was before people really woke up to the whole e-payment story. And since yeah. that, they've just just kept going up. They've been absolutely lovely. I gotta um, ask you this before we go, though, Pete. Yeah. What do you think of crypto? Uh, personally, I think it's just a big bubble. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. I wrote, that, that's yeah, fine. You can find a blog I wrote a few weeks ago. I mean, one of the biggest mysteries to me is I actually wonder if, if Bitcoin or, or crypto in general actually has any value at all. Is it just a, a, a forms of doing administration? So, you know, is it really a currency at all? So I, I, I'm very dubious on it. Yeah, I am no, I, I, I still don't understand it. So, but I have to ask because it's so newsworthy. And you know what, Pete? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm so glad I reached out to you on Twitter because, you know, most people that come on here, they have an ax to grind. They have subscriptions. Uh, they have a service. And I really respect your giving spirit and how you're trying to help people navigate waters that at times can be treacherous and uh, appreciate the work that you're doing and will now call you my trading warrior brother and very glad, that our, very glad that our paths crossed Pete and uh, keep doing the great work and you're sowing great seeds uh, by helping people like this. Uh, I really recommend that people that are into equities follow Pete at uh, Wheelie Dealer and, <laughs> and wheeliedealer.weebly.com is Pete's website. So Pete, you know, I, I, I hope you have the best 2018 in every way, not just in your trading, but in every aspect of your life. I hope you have a great 2018. Thank you, Dale. That's fantastic. Thanks for inviting me on. And it's, uh, I, I hope the readers found it useful. You, you, your listeners found it useful. They did. I uh, thank you for coming to Face and edifying our community very much, Pete. And uh, we'll, we'll have this video for you to use, and uh, I'll tweet it out there in a few hours. Again, thank you, Pete. And uh, a great website. I know I'll be using it as a resource. So thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. All right, everyone. That's a wrap for Monday. That was Peter Court. And you can find him on Twitter and his website. And I'm glad you enjoyed it. And remember, most of all, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Adios. Thanks again, Pete.